Okay, so... Hey, boys and girls! How you doing? I start talking like Captain Kangaroo. Remember that character? Um, great. Now here's an image on a feral cell, and certainly there have been tens of thousands of people see said images, but they could describe what it looks like. Well, isn't that interesting? That's so cool. Looks like a spirograph. Here's the important point. I have two images side by side here. The only reason I actually put a box around the image on the right is to basically say it's the same box as I have over here on the left. Now on the right I have a ring magnet which is outlined by these two white circles and on the left I just have a regular conventional magnet. Doesn't matter if it's a cube magnet or a cylinder magnet, same thing. Well isn't that special? Now you notice that the inside images are identical with a little bit of difference in exposure. Now the neat thing is is that on the left we're looking at the quote-unquote pole they both look the same, of a magnet, an actual magnet. But on the right, let me grab the ring magnet, huh? On the right, we're looking at nothing. So here's the question to you. This is a riddle, and it's not a riddle. Mother Nature likes to hide stuff right underneath your nose, because humanity is not all that evolved. Certainly not so when it comes to cosmic mechanics. And uh, scientists today are not actually scientists in the true platonic sense of the term. What they are is mathematicians. Um, I'll never forget this guy that, uh, I won't name him. He made uh, these magnetic viewing devices for years. And he was a college professor. And now he works for NASA. And he's a hardcore programmer. He made all these uh, magnetic uh, applications. And I'm not putting the guy down. Um, program, computer program applications to uh, mimic magnetic interactions, known interactions with uh, known ma math formulas. And then he was showing an image just like this up on the projector screen. <laughs> Someone said, <laughs> and I'll give him credit for answering truthfully instead of, which is what most scientists do, and they BS their way through it. Well, oh, that's a quantum interaction. Now, what he actually said is, someone said, hey, what's causing this spirograph-like pattern? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> so you're the guy that... Um, yeah, let me get back to my main point. So you see over here on the right, we're looking at nothing. Nothing at all. Now, the answer to this is really simple. And by the way, the only thing that makes a ring magnet special relative to other magnets is because its physical shape is the exact same geometric shape of magnetism itself, i.e. the torus. Now, this would be like a flat donut or a flat torus, but nevertheless, it's still a torus, all right? A ring. So the actual physical ring magnet is shaped exactly like the uh, geometric uh, three-dimensional, well, technically it's four-dimensional, uh, field pattern of magnetism itself, which is toroidal. But can you explain to me? And the answer is simple. We'll get to the answer here. I'm not going to leave this one unanswered. Why we have the same image on the right as we have on the left? Here we're looking at a magnet. There's a physical magnet underneath this image. And over here, there's nothing underneath the boxed out square on the left here. So what do you think the answer is? Well, first we have to trash about four, five, six thousand years of preconceived BS that humanity has about magnetism. A magnet does not have a magnetic field. Well, sure it does. Everybody knows this. What are you talking about, you fat tattooed loser? Does a magnet have a field around it? Do you really think that's the case? Is that the case? Does a magnet have a field around it? Or is it the case that there is a possible medium that the point source, what people call field coherence, you can say, well, a magnet, a magnet is a coherent field. That's partially true. The actual truth is point source. Um, but the magnet does not have a field that it's emitting. Actually, the medium itself, of which in everything is steeped, ever-present, all around, non-Cartesian. I don't care if you call it counter space. I don't care if you call it uh, dark matter. It doesn't matter if you call it zero-point energy. It, who gives a damn? Mother Nature doesn't care about that sort of crap. Obviously not. So, so first you have to dismiss, a no dismiss the notion that a magnet has a field. So obviously we're looking at a field perturbation identical on the right as on the left, right? Other than difference in exposure. They're both exactly the same. But there's nothing here. 
So what the hell is the answer? This should be really simple. By the way, I own every book ever published on magnetism, including the really ancient stuff and uh, including all the really new stuff. You'll not find an answer for this anywhere. Ask any scientist, guess your college physics for... Oh, I have no idea. Either that or they'll BS their way through. So what's the answer? Looking at the ring magnet through the supercell here, we have the exact same pattern in the central void, where nothing is, as a cube magnet or any other magnet. The field geometry is not in the magnet or of the magnet, but of the field, the medium, i.e. the ether itself. What we're looking at, of course, in the lines, whether it be a ring magnet or otherwise, these lines outside or the lines inside, are constructive and destructive interference lines. There is no such thing as magnetism alone. People think, well, a magnet has a magnetic field around it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a field that it's emitting. It is a field that is generated by due nature of the point source, you could say incorrectly but partially correctly, field coherency. But what about this? So what's the answer? What's, what, what's the answer? Magnetic attraction doesn't exist, and a magnet doesn't have a magnetic field. There's not merely magnetism around a magnet, whether you think it be emitted from the magnet, which is not the case, or in the presence, when something is present, something else is present, right? Like in the absence of light, then a lack of uh, illumination or a lack of heat. When you're in a shadow, which is not a thing, it's an absence of light, a privation, and we can't reify a privation, something else happens. So this is the reason why Tesla said space has no properties. It has attributes. Like the attribute of a shadow is you feel cold if you step into a shadow. We actually have to have a true scientific mind. And by a true scientific mind, I mean one that's able to engage platonic retroduction. We have to understand incommensurability. So, in the void of this ring magnet, identical to the actual magnet on the left, and both of these, of course, are actual magnets, why is the image the same? You have to think about it. You just can't throw out wild guesses. The reason why the image on the right is identical to the image on the left is because the presence of this point source of field incommensurability is of the medium itself, whether it be a ring magnet or a cube magnet or my hand or a hot dog or a dog turd, everything is steeped within the ever-present non-Cartesian field. I don't care if you call it zero-point energy, I don't care if you call it the ether, and Mother Nature does not give a crap. Most importantly, too, something I have uh, trouble relating to people, and that, that is which they think that a magnet has magnetism around it. This is not the case. Wherever one, there is the other. I mean, we can't talk about a shadow without speaking of the absence of light. There's no such thing as magnetism. What the hell does that sort of crazy statement mean? It means that magnetism, as has been said, very intelligently and correctly, the dielectric field. The dielectric field, okay, which is counterspatial in nature. This is the conjugate magnetodielectric geometry of the magnet, which is a toroid and a hyperboloid. The inverse image of a toroid, or a hyperboloid, I said, excuse me. The inverse image of a, to uh, a toroboloid, actually that's another word. It's a torus and a hyperboloid, excuse me. I'm always thinking about 10 things at once. The inverse image of a torus, excuse me, is the hyperboloid or the hourglass shape, the inverse image of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 not the torus, but the hyperboloid, excuse me, it has been a long day. The inverse image of the hyperboloid, excuse me, I have all these field geometries in my head, is of course the torus. These uh, two form the conjugate magnetodielectric geometry of the magnet. But the field is not of the magnet or emitted by the magnet or contained by the magnet. It's the ever-present nature of the pressure mediation. That It's kind of like me or like another fat guy walking across like a weak floor, you know? It's the nature of the fat guy is he's emitting something that's causing the timbers to creak. No, I mean, it's the weight, my acceleration towards the earth that, like, my, the wood floor, <laughs> the wood floor of my grandmother's house would creak, right? That's a pretty funny analogy, right? Fat guy walks across an old wooden floor and it starts creaking and moaning, right? And would that be, and this is a really a crude analogy, but a funny one anyway, would be the fat guy be emitting something when he walks across the field, or in this case, the wood floor? 
No, it's not the case. It's the nature of that entity that is causing the warpage of the field, in this case the wood floor, to creak and moan. I know it's a pretty funny analogy. The magnet is not emitting anything. It is the nature of its field incommensurability and coherence, or specifically and intelligently and more accurately, point source that is causing the ether or the medium or the field to exhibit this. In the center of this ring magnet where nothing is, we have the exact same field presence and manifestation of constructive and destructive interference as we do on the left of an actual magnet. Of course, like I said, both these are actual magnets, but there is, inside this uh, inner circle here, there is nothing there. There's nothing there. Think about it a second. There's nothing there. Of course, I don't need uh, the uh, supercell to demonstrate this, but it's a good visual, since people love visuals. It's a good visual demonstration of, uh, you know, something I even realized in the first edition of my book. You know, a magnet is not emitting something. For the sake of convention, we can say that. But, of course, it's also not merely magnetism, because magnetism is the dielectric field and loss of inertia or potential. I had a brain twister there just about five minutes ago on the torus and the hyperboloid. I have all these obtuse uh, field geometries in my head, and I was also wanting to create an interesting new word simply for the sake of the book of the conjugate magnetodielectric uh, geometries which is a torus and a hyperboloid and I was going to call it a toroboloid because those two together form the conjugate geometry of, uh, of uh, the entire universe. It's asinine for, uh, asinine for us or any human being to think that magnetism is one thing, dielectricity is another. I mean, it's just as stupid to think ice is one thing and water is another and steam yet another thing. You know, there are not these... Mother Nature can't work that way. Simplicity is divinity. We can't, we can't uh, molest, molest Mother Nature with the inverse of Occam's razor, which is stupidity and modern quantum and particle physics. This BS notion, well, we got gravity here, electricity there, magnetism here, and electricity. That's just absolute BS. It's like a stupid-ass child that thinks water is one thing and ice is another. You know, so they, they're a child. They don't know any, well, that's ice and that's water. Those are two different things, you know. That, it's like, no, that's just hard water. It's, uh, once it reaches a temperature, it solidifies. Magnetism is not something there. Wherever one, there is the other. I mean, these lines are due to constructive and destructive interference of the interlacing pressure mediations between magnetism and the dielectric. And the reason why the same field pressure mediation, constructive destructive interference pattern is present with inside the inside the magnet as outside is because the field pressure itself is not being emitted from nor is it a attribute or property of the magnet. It is a property of the magnet's influence upon the medium within which it is in. And by in, of course, that is ridiculous because when we say in, that infers a Cartesian locus as if the medium is somewhere. It's not somewhere, it's everywhere. It's everywhere underneath our conventional Cartesian uh, phenomenal universe of space, time, magnitude, and mass. Um, it's absolutely impossible to even think of understanding field theory without counter space or the ether. Um, it's an absolute absurdity um, because when you replace the ether, you have to replace it with something absolutely ridiculous and BS that only a mathematician could come up with, which is uh, uh, unicorn particles and, uh, you know, time-traveling particles, and they've got a particle for everything. Skirmions, uh, virtual photons, these are their own words, by the way. Complete absurdity. This is why uh, Nikola Tesla called these people that uh, think deeply but were quite insane. They were deep thinkers with uh, PhDs and uh, very good at mathematics, but they, you know, they haven't got a clue in hell as to how the cosmos actually works. So, anyway, that's the long answer. I guess I could have made it a lot shorter, right? Someone's going to tell me, oh, it took you a long time to get to the point. Well, I have to lead up to a lot of stuff, especially on complex stuff when it comes to incommensurability and understanding what the hell is going on. Human beings have uh, five, 6,000 years of crap in their head thinking that a magnet emits magnetism and that magnetic attraction exists and all this other stupid crap. Um... That's not true. It's just not true. 
is what we perceive to be true in playing with magnets and lodestones for thousands of years, but that's not what the hell is going on. This is actually what's going on. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. If you like these videos, you always click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy. Bless be done. You will be Aloha, paka, and uh, good night.